Greetings from Adams Business Center, the leaders of document finishing products throughout the Mid-South area. The purpose of this video is to show you the proper setup and operation of your brand new Lamrite 2700 laminating machine. Our recommendation is to tilt the box after you open it over on its side like you see here. The machine is packed with styrofoam and can slide out. Someone can get under here and pull it right out of the uh, box. Once you've unboxed your laminating machine, you need to set it up on a sturdy table or one of our carts. And this is the position that you want the machine to be set. If you'll notice, the machine is right to the back edge of the, uh, of the cart, and as it should be with the table if that's what you choose to use. And the purpose for that is that uh, when the film comes out the back of the machine and exits, it's supposed to go straight down by gravity to the floor. Uh, if you have it set too far uh, forward, it's going to hit the table first and that gives it more of a chance of doing a wrap up or a jam. The other thing is, you'll notice on the back of the unit, this is where your feed table is positioned. If you want to take that out and on the back side, you will see a, a tinsel, copper tinsel. And that helps in, in the, uh, the possibility that you have a lot of static electricity. And uh, in the colder weather, the winter time and so forth, uh, that's a condition that sometimes arises. And that static electricity will cause the film to cling to the back of a machine or cabinet and that uh, uh, will have a uh, tendency to wrap up around the rollers. So this dissipates that charge, that static charge. The other thing I want you to notice on the back side of the machine is this little trimmer right here. Now the trimmer you can notice here that uh, it can cut in either direction. There's a blade on both sides. Uh, once it's cut, slide this little metal piece to cover it. That's just a safety feature. So when you're going to cut, just slide it down, make your cut, and slide it back. Right now, just to look at the different sections of the machine, on the left-hand side panel right here, you have your controls. And this will allow you to adjust your temperature, your speed. It has a digital readout so you know exactly how fast and how hot uh, the machine is running. Uh, it also has indicator lights. These two lights both need to be lit in order that the safety features are engaged. Now, the, you might be able to hear this. When I lift the heat shield, you might hear a click. Okay? That is this switch right here. The heat shield, therefore, must be in the down position uh, to protect against fingers going in there or any other uh, odd items. Um, it stops the rollers from turning. The other switch is right here and that is when your feed table is in position. There's one light for each of these switches. When both of them are engaged and your, your machine is safe for operating, both lights will be on. It's your, your on and off button to uh, uh, put power to the machine. The machine is plugged into a normal uh, 110 outlet. Now over on this side of the unit we have uh, your run switch. This is 
your run position when you turn it on there and push the pressure release down, you start running the laminating material through. Both of these have to be engaged. So if you'll notice the two pressure and heat rollers right here, if I pull this lever back, you'll see that roller rise up off the bottom. So that gaps the, uh, uh, the two rollers apart. Now that is a, a very nice feature because it makes it much easier um, to unload film and reload film, but also in the event that you might have a, a, a jam or a wrap up, you can easily uh, remove that uh, by gapping those rollers. There are two knurled knobs right here, and these are adjustments for the top roll of film and the bottom roll of film in terms of tension. Uh, tension is nothing more than drag on the film. If there was no drag whatsoever or tension, the film would tend to wrinkle before it got even to the heat rollers, and you'd have wrinkling on your material. So the tension pulls, stretches the film a little bit and pulls it tight so that the, there's no wrinkles when it goes through. First thing we want to do is to get power to the machine. So we're going to flip this switch right here. That's the power on. Now the, the display initializes itself. And right now this is the reading or the temperature uh, that the rollers and the machine is set at. And it's a 75 degrees. So that's just room temperature. Uh, if we touch one of the temperature buttons here, we can see wh what it's set at. It's set at 248, um, only 75 because we're running on the cold. The blue button right here indicates cold. And uh, this is for heat. So what we're going to do is touch the heat and the machine will begin to warm up now. And uh, this display will tell us as it's warming up and gets to the uh, 248 degrees. Now, where did we get that uh, 248 degrees? There's a chart right here at the top. And this tells you with different weights of laminating film, uh, which by the way, education uses 1.5 mil almost exclusively. So if you just run straight across, it tells you that um, uh, it should run 248 degrees Fahrenheit on speed four. All right, so if we touch this, it tells you we're set at 248 and you can see that the temperature is beginning to rise. And it's on the heater. Now, we have to wait until this green light, the ready light, comes on. That tells us that not only has it hit that temperature on the uh, registers on the uh, sensor, but that the rollers are, are what we call heat soaked and they're fully ready to do lamination. So the first thing that will happen, this will get to the 248 degree mark and you'll hear a beep when it, it'll tell you when it gets there. However, it's not ready until the ready light goes on. Uh, now, this section right here is for your speed. Right now, it's set at zero feet per minute. We hit that, now we're at one, and if I hold it down, it will go to all the way up to nine. And then we can move that down. Now, as we said earlier, uh, for, for a mil and a half film, 248 degrees, this should run on speed four. There's one other button here, this is a reverse button, so that if you needed to, to back some of the material out, you can hit the reverse button and do that. But also remember that you do have, on the side of the machine, that pressure release on the rollers, and that's the first thing you should use in the event of uh, trying to get something out of there. 
Now, there's another switch right here. It says auto shutoff. The purpose of the automatic shutoff is that after a period of time, when you have disengaged the rollers and the machine has come to a stop, and that time being uh, 60 minutes, one hour, uh, the machine will then begin to cool down uh, to about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, so that's like a standby mode. And after a, another, I think it's 30 minutes time, uh, the machine will completely shut off. Uh, the safety part of that is that if you were uh, laminating late in the afternoon and somebody forgot to turn the machine off uh, overnight, uh, when they come in in the morning, the machine will be shut off. All right, so we have the machine warming up. And while it's warming up, we can now begin to load the film on the machine. This is a diagram of the way the machine should be loaded with laminating film from this side of the machine. This represents the film that will be on this shaft right here. And you can see that it, it unwinds, the film unwinds from the bottom side of the roll, comes around one of these idler bars, you can see that this moves freely. There's a second one here too, and it moves freely. So it would come around both of those and then through the two sets of rollers. Now the diagram says that on the second one you can come over the top and that's okay too. It, it could be either way. Um, we prefer to, to run it under both. It's, it's actually simpler that way. Now the bottom roll film, which goes right here, also uh, unwinds from the bottom of the roll. And it goes toward the center of the machine, just like the top roll did, where the heat is. But it comes around this idler bar right here. And then comes up to meet the film from the top roll. It goes through one set of rollers and then through the back set of rollers. And then out the machine. That's the way we're going to load it. All right. It is advisable to get your laminating film out first and arrange it exactly the way you're going to put it on the machine. Now, remember we are saying here that the top roll feeds off the bottom and comes towards you. The way you're looking at it here, let's call this the top roll. And you can see that the film unwinds from the bottom and it comes towards you. Just the way it's shown on the diagram. The bottom roll of film unwinds from the bottom and moves away from you toward the center of the machine. So we're going to set this one up first. Now to do that, we take the shaft out of the machine. On the left hand side, it's a cradle. It just lifts straight up. On the right hand side, it's a, a little oblong piece to be inserted. Now, it's clearly um, marked for the bottom roller. You'll also notice that there are, are marks for the different widths of laminating film that you can use, going all the way up to a 27-inch film if you wish. Uh, we have 25-inch film right here, so we're going to end right there where the arrow is. And so we're going to center it between that 25 inch line and this 25 inch line. Now, this is the way we want the roll to go in. Notice also that there are two points right here, two metal points. The purpose of this is to dig the inside of your core of film and it holds it in place so that the tension adjustment on your machine works properly and it has some drag on the film. So we can insert 
the shaft up to the points. Once we get to that point, it helps if you rotate it with the, away from the points, like that. So I'm twisting it and pushing it at the same time up to the 25 inch mark. And it will automatically be at that mark on the other side. Now we'll put the roll back in the machine inserting the the right side first, just reverse how we got it, took it out, and that in the cradle. And there's your film. Now we want to do the same thing from the for the top. Lift it up out of the cradle, pull it out of the machine. And this is our top roll of film. Now once again, we're going to put the shaft in, and when we get it up to the pins, we're going to rotate it away from the points. Just like that. Up to the 25 inch mark. Now, Film is on. All right, now we want to start with the bottom roll. That needs to come around this idler bar right here. It comes around that idler bar. Now notice there's a, a channel that that bar rides on that looks like a, a, j, a lazy J, a J laying down on its side. So this bar, if you just lift it with your fingers and forward, it can roll down into that, that position right there. Now you've just heard the signal going off, and that tells me that we're right up around the 248 degree mark, and it does show ready to go. There are times when it actually takes a little bit longer for that ready light to come on to, for the rolls to get heat soaked. Um, but in this case, it should be ready to go now. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Getting back to this, I, I want to start with this bar in the up position so that I can lay some of the film right in this position of the machine. Now I can let the bar down, making it easy to grab the film like that. Just like that. All right, now we want to thread the top roll of film. In a moment, uh, we're gonna thread the film through, but I just wanna show you uh, where it's going to go. I'm, I'm placing a threading card under here and you can see it coming out. You see that? Right over the top roll. That's where you want the film to go. So the easy way to get the film over there is to give yourself, now you, you want to be sure that you have it loaded correctly. It's coming off the bottom toward the center of the machine. All right, give yourself some slack back here. Then take your rigid threading card, lay it on this post. This post here does not move. This is just a, a structural piece. You lay it on there and then slide it under the rollers to turn. Oops. Okay. And you want about that much film to come down and touch both rollers. And you can see the heat is uh, liquefying the adhesive that's on the film. Now we can take our, our bottom 
Well, let me put the heat shield down first. All right. And one way you can tell that you have your rolls aligned properly, beside the fact that it's right on the 25 inch mark, is to take the bottom one. You've got to do this while the heat shield is in position. Bring it up to the top, and it should meet. It should meet exactly on the edge of the, the top roll of film. So we're satisfied now that, that our rolls are aligned properly. I lift my heat shield back up, take the film and from the bottom, touch it to the melted part of the top film, just like that. All right, and give ourselves a little bit of slack on, on both top and bottom. Now you want to lift the bottom roll back in position. Now we're going to put the feed table in position. There are two pins on both sides that you want to engage. On the right hand side it's this pin and this pin. On the left two just like that plus You've got this switch. When I press down on that switch, you see this light go on, the shield light. Okay? Or actually, this one went out, I'm sorry. So that's your paper tray switch. And you will notice on the lead edge of the feed table, you've got a little slot here that engages those pins. So what I'm going to do is to aim for the, those two pins on the, on the top and then just drop it in position there. And when both lights are out, we know that we have our safety switches engaged. If, if the feed table, I mean the uh, heat shield switch is raised and not in position, that light goes on telling you that it's not engaged, the machine doesn't run. If the feed table is not in position, that light goes on. It tells you you don't have it positioned correctly. When they're both correct, the lights are off. Now you can take your threading card, put it right in the center of um, the, the uh, film. And if you're able to get uh, a, a, a wider card, in fact, the full width of 25 inches, you're better off because they're, it'll take all the wrinkles out immediately. Um, putting a smaller one in the center here will create some boat waking uh, lines until they smooth out. Now, I put that in position and push the run button on. Now once I drop the pressure roller, it takes off. Now if you'll notice, this is what I meant by the, the boat waking, but it only takes about a foot of film. And now if you look right here, it's completely smooth. Now, to stop it, I'm going to shut the run button off. Now we can use our trimmer, pull the little safety collar down, nick the film, and then just run it straight along, just like that. Now, we can trim this out, or we can use our threading card over again if we wish. If we do eight and a half by 11 sheets, we can get two of them abreast with 25 inch film in there, leaving a border on this edge and this edge, and as much border in between as we can get. When you go to laminate your material, 
feed it from the lead edge. There are people who have a tendency to take something, especially if it's long, and try to hold it back here and feed it in. And it's easy to wrinkle your material that way. But if you feed it from the lead edge, it'll always start properly and generally it'll come out perfect. So we hit the run button and then I ease it forward until it grabs, then I let go. comes out I'll, I'll cut it off. Once again we can take our blade, nick it, and then trim it. And look at the quality of the lamination that you get with your new machine. Now I want to show you what to do when you when you have something larger. We have a, a map of, of the state of Arkansas here and we want to laminate this. It's a little bit too wide to go through that way so we'll have to run it in this direction. Now when you are laminating something of this size just like with the smaller items, you want to feed it from the lead edge. But when you have something that wide, you want to make sure that it's absolutely flat when you, when you engage the rollers with it. So notice, we do not push the material in first. We wait back here until the rollers start to turn. Then we ease it forward until it grabs. Once it grabs, on a large item, it's best to pull your hands back like this, use your thumbs to curl around the bottom of the tray. Spread your fingers out and let the machine pull the material through your fingers. That way you're going to keep it flat all the way through. So here's how that works. We push the run button, smooth it out, ease it forward, and then right in the center, Right in the center, I just wrap my thumbs around and, and let it pull through. You'll notice how quietly the machine operates. It gives you a very high quality end product. And there's a perfect lamination without any wrinkles or bubbles or blemishes whatsoever. Uh, it can be trimmed uh, with leaving a border on it for a complete encapsulation, or you can trim it right to the edge. I've got a pair of scissors here. And just to show you, you, we have trim boards to do this to make things a lot quicker. But if you're going to trim with scissors, close the scissors up and use relatively close to the beginning or the tip and run it right along the edge of your document. All right, so you can trim it right flush to the edge or you can just by eye leave about an eighth of an inch border. All right, so we have this edge trimmed flush and this one trimmed with just about a one eighth inch board.
once you are through laminating, and uh, this could be simply because you're, you, you've done all your material, or that you run out of film, and it's time to change film. Um, by the way, a little caution. Never let the film run all the way out. Uh, you have two rolls, you have the top and you have the bottom. Keep your eye on both, and when they start getting down to the last few feet of film, stop and change the film. If you let it run all the way out, the two rolls are not exactly the same length. One of them is gonna gum up your machine and cause you a, a service call. All right, I lifted the heat shield out of the way. Now I'm gonna lift the feed table up and then just pull it straight out, just like that. Now what we wanna do is clear your machine from the film that's in here. And to do that, we recommend that you use something like this little safety knife here that you can get from Adams Business Center and just run it right along the film on the bottom to separate the film there. And then the same thing on the top. Just like that. Now, we lift the heat shield and drop this bar so that I can grab the bottom tail of film, touch it to the top, open your rollers, and then you can pull the excess film out just like that. Our machine is cleared just that easily. Now we could take the rolls off if we had to change them. And this is the time where you would use a cleaning pad to clean the excess uh, glue off your rollers. So when you're changing film, that's, that's one of the steps that you want to take. Now, if you'll notice over here, I can see a little bit of glue there. That's normal, that is called ooze. That's the kind of, of uh, glue that you're gonna see coming out both ends of the uh, film. If you have the film properly and exactly aligned, that's gonna be at a minimum. Now I can just take this, it's a Scotch-Brite pad. There again, we do sell these too. But you see that little bit there, how quickly that comes off. And um, you, uh, you do this while the machine is still warm. In fact, we can, um, well, we'll leave it on here right now. Um, but I can, I can still run the rollers. Now these two switches have to be engaged, so. I see a little bit here. I think that they're relatively clean, but that's what you use to clean them. And then it's good to take just a, uh, a soft a lint-free cloth or rag and um, with a little bit of just dampen it and wipe the rollers so that any little particles that you, you work loose from here uh, come off of the rollers. That is the, the essence of um, uh, using your new laminating machine. If you have any questions when you're going through the operation, uh, there will be a, a a name tag on here for Adams Business Center, and you can call us at that number. We'd be glad to help.